Please be seated. The special guest of honor, Your Excellency, the President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mamadou Buhari, Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General B.S. Magashi, who retired, the Chief of Defense Staff, General A.G. Olon Ishaki Najanami Medal, the Chief Host, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusu Bratai Nigerian Army Medal, the Chief of Air Staff, ably represented here by Director of Plans Nigerian Air Force, Air Vice Marshal E.O. Alade, former Chief of Defense Staff and Chief of Army Staff here present, the Chief of Defense Intelligence, the Director Army Ministry of Defense, the Chief of Policy and Plans Army, Principal Staff Officers from Defense and Services Headquarters here present, the Tertiary Commander of the Shonlafi Adole and Commanders of various military operations here present, Corps Commanders, General Officer Commanding, Heads of Nigerian Army Establishment here present, Heads of Security Agencies here present, Your Excellency Foreign and Nigerian Defense Advisors here present, the National President, Nigerian Army Officers Wife Association here present, Senior Officers, both serving and retired, distinguished invited guests, participants, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am Colonel K. O. Ogusonya, the Master of Ceremony for today's occasion. On behalf of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tiwa Bratai, officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army, it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you all to Muhammadu Buhari Military Cantonment, Giri Abuja, venue for the commissioning of Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command Main Building, Cyber Operations Center, N Nigerian Army Intelligence and Cyber Warfare School, as well as the launching of housing scheme for families of kill in action officers and soldiers. Most especially welcome the special guests of honor, Your Excellency the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, for fighting time out of your schedule, busy schedule to grace this occasion, sir. We are indeed privileged and glad to have you in our midst this morning. The Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference is a yearly event which affords the Nigerian Army strategies and operation commanders the platform to reappraise how the service has fared in the performance of the constitutional roles during the, during the year 2020 and also make suggestions for the year 2021. The theme of this year's conference is Human Capacity Development in Sustaining Professionalism and, responsi and Responsiveness of the Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional role. Without much of your time, sir, may I humbly invite the chief host in person of the chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Yusu Bratai, to please deliver his welcome address, the chief of army staff, sir. Excellency, the special guest of honor, the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Salihi Magashi. The Chief of Defense Staff, Representative of the Chief of Air Staff, former Chiefs of Defense Staff and Army and Chiefs of Army Staff here present, the Chief of Policy and Plans Army, the 
Chief of Defense Intelligence, Heads of Security and Paramilitary Agencies here present, the Commander, Multinational Joint Task Force, and other commanders here present, the principal staff officers from the Defense and Services Headquarters, co-commanders, general officers, commanding, Commandant Nigerian Army Defense Academy, the Vice Chancellor Nigerian Army University, the Commander Tradog, Director General Daikon, Commandants of Child Service and Nigerian Army Institutions here present, Director Army Minister of Defense, Directors and Deputy Directors at the Defense and the Services Headquarters very senior officers, the national president of Nigerian Army Officers Wives Association, my dear wife, distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed my pleasure to, on behalf of officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army, heartily and most respectfully welcome Mr. President Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, and all other distinguished personalities here with us today. We are indeed most grateful for honoring us with your esteemed presence at this opening ceremony of the Chief of Army Staff's Annual Conference Year 2020. Today's event marks the sixth in the series of annual conferences since the advent of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration. Going down memory lane, it is worthwhile to recall the state of affairs in the Nigerian army in early 2015, which was characterized by low morale arising from persistent setbacks in the counterinsurgency operations in the Northeast. Mr. President's charge on my assumption of duty was to evolve a professional and highly motivated Nigerian army capable of conducting the full spectrum of military operations in a decisive manner. This has been largely achieved with Nigerian army currently well poised to tackle myriad of contemporary and emerging security threats. While this year has been quite challenging, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted many of our activities. I'm happy to note that my strategic directive for the year 2020, which is to sustain professionalism and responsiveness of Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional roles, provided a point of reference which enabled us to adapt quickly with minimal impact on our operations. Within the period under review, the Nigerian Army embarked on massive infrastructural development, undertook further force restructuring, conducted several local and overseas training, carried out various operations as well as optimized logistics and its support elements, amongst others. Worthy of mention is the new Force Special Forces Command, which has carried out impactful operations across the North Central region since its inception. We have also evolved seamless administrative measures and improved tremendously on welfare packages as approved by Mr. President to boost the morale of troops across the nation. Additionally, we have intensified our civil military relations efforts and imbibed the best global practices in the conduct of our operations in line with the principles of laws of armed conflict as well as promotion and respect for fundamental human rights. This was most evident in the professional conduct of troops during Operation Peel Shield, while in support of civil authorities during the large-scale criminality that ensued in the wake of the NSAS protest. In the bid to enhance our overall performance, attempts will be made throughout this week to evaluate and appraise our activities and efforts so far towards achieving the overall objective of better positioning the Nigerian Army to face the tasks ahead in the year 2021 and beyond. 
as a responsive army, we are delighted to showcase to Mr. President our latest effort at emplacing the requisite capability for full spectrum operations, particularly in the cyber domain. Mr. President, sir, we are indeed honored and delighted to have you in our midst to commission the headquarters Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command complex. The command is a child of necessity, born out of our experiences in counter-terrorism and counter-insurgency operations in the last five years. I am happy to state that the command, since its establishment in 2017, has played a crucial role, albeit silent role, in all our operations. It is expected that the new complex with upscale capabilities will therefore lead to further operational successes. Mr. President, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is with a high sense of responsibility and respect that I once again humbly express the Nigerian Army's profound gratitude to Mr. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, for his invaluable support to the Nigerian Army. On behalf of officers and soldiers of the Nigerian Army, I once more want to humbly reassure Mr. President of our unalloyed loyalty and pledge our total commitment to the defense of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On this note, I welcome Mr. President and other dignitaries to this opening ceremony of the Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference 2020. Thank you and God bless. Your Excellency, the special guest of honor, sir, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Syria 14 of today's program, which is remarked by the Honorable Minister of Defense. May I have the honor to humbly request the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tiwa Brata, to please invite the Honorable Minister of Defense, in person of Major General B.S. Nagashi, retired Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, to make his remark, the Chief of Army Staff, sir. President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, the Chairman of the State Committee on Army, Chairman of House Committee on Army, other members of the National Assembly here present, the Honorable Minister of Federal Capital Territory, the Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of Air Staff, heavily represented, former Chief of Defense Staff and the Army Staff here present, the Chief of Policy and Plans Army, the Chief of Defense Intelligence Agency, Heads of Security and Paramilitary Agencies here present, Commander, Multinational Joint Task Force, and other commanders of the various military operations. Principal Staff Officers, Co-Commanders, General Officer Commanding, Commandant, Nigerian Army Defense Academy, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Defense, Brigade Commanders, and other commanders here present, Commander Traddock, DG Daikon, Commandants of Tri-Service and Nigerian Army Institutions, 
Director, Army Ministry of Defense, Directors and Deputy Directors from the Defense and Service Headquarters, Senior Military Officers, both serving and retired, the Vice Chancellor, Nigeria Army University of U, and other members of academia. Distinguished invited guests, ladies, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I am most delighted to be in your Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference. As you all know, the Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference is an avenue to reassess the preparedness and review the operational readiness of the Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constitutional roles. I am hopeful that the liberation during this conference will generate new strategies for enhancing stability in our country and to help in charting a new course for the Nigerian Army in the year 2021. In line with the mandate of the Ministry of Defense of ensuring high state of combat readiness of the armed forces, both on land, sea, and air, I want to appreciate most sincerely the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, for his usual quick intervention in the approval of funds for the procurement of critical equipment and platforms for the Armed Forces. We are indeed most grateful for the enormous support given, which has provided the services with requisite capabilities to tackle the numerous security threats across the country. We are not unmindful of the present economic challenges that we are grappling with as a nation, as well as the needs of other critical sectors of our national life. It is against this background that I want to assure Mr. President that the Ministry of Defense, under my leadership, has emplaced measures to ensure judicious use of resources allocated to us. The year 2020 has been a challenging one. While the COVID-19 pandemic caused major disruptions globally, the security challenges that threaten the safety and security of lives and property in our country still persist. During the year, we continue to witness incidences of violence and criminality arising from Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast, banditry and cattle wrestling in the Northwest, farmers' hardest conflict in the North Central, as well as kidnapping, cultism, and armed robbery in the South. The armed forces of Nigeria and the Nigerian Army in particular have been in the forefront of efforts to restore peace in the country. In this regard, I commend the efforts of the Nigerian Army in the Northeast, which have led to a gradual return of internal displaced persons to their communities in furtherance of the settlement plans of the Borno State Government. I also note the successes that have been recorded in the Northwest especially after the launch of exercise Sahel Sanity earlier this year. I urge you all to use this conference to refine strategies toward the total dissemination of all immunical forces in the coming year. At this juncture, I want to commiserate with armed forces and families of the personnel who have led the supreme price to keep our dear country safe. The nation is indebted to those heroes 
who have contributed immeasurably towards ensuring that we have peaceful country. The Ministry of Defense will continue to work hard with the services to ensure that the welfare of the families of the deceased personnel and all veterans is accorded a higher priority. Before I end my remarks, I wish once again appreciate Mr. President for his commitment towards ensuring that lasting peace and security is restored in this country. I also urge the Chief of Defense Staff and Service Chief not to prevent in steering the ship of our various services towards the accomplishment of the assigned role. Lastly, I wish you a successful deliberation during the training week. Thank you all and God bless. Your Excellency, the Special Guest of Honor, sir, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to sit back and watch documentary on Headquarters Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command and Cyber Operations Center. Nigerian Army, as one of the leading armies of the world, regularly initiates and formulates policies and programs to bolster its operations and administration. With Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buratai taking the reins of leadership of the Nigerian Army in 2015, the transformation journey to a professionally responsive army in the discharge of its constitutional roles began. In line with this plan to place the Nigerian Army in the League of Internationally Renowned Armies in the cyberspace, the Chief of Army Staff established the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, NACWC, in 2018. The Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command was established in uh, October 2018 by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukurisu Buratai. This followed the realization that after land, sea, air, and space. Cyberspace is the fifth domain of warfare. At inception, the command was equipped with the latest and the best systems, tools, and software, and manned by a crop of dedicated and well-trained personnel drawn from across the Nigerian army. The Command is tasked with the responsibility of protecting and monitoring critical Nigerian information system assets. The command also has the task of ensuring the presence of the Nigerian army in cyberspace. The command also promotes the culture of cyber security among Nigerian personnel and ensures the compliance, adherence to guidelines, principles, and standards as related to cyber security. The command has the task of also ensuring that the Nigerian information system and other assets are safe. We have the task of fighting cyber terrorism, fake news, identity theft, online radicalization, among others. On the 15th of October 2018, Lieutenant General Tuku Buratai formally commissioned the NACWC at the Army Headquarters in Abuja.
The NACWC presence in the Nigerian security circle was cemented when the Chief of Defense Staff, General A.G. Oloni Shakin, other service chiefs and heads of security agencies visited the Nigerian Army Situation Room at the Army Headquarters. Equally, the Senate Committee on ICT and Cyber Crimes visited the Situation Room and they were briefed on the operations of the NACWC. Charged with the responsibility to effectively combat cyber threats to the Nigerian Army Information System and Nigeria at large, the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command has achieved so much within a short period. It is worthy of note that with strategic directives from the Chief of Army Staff, the Nigerian Army Situation Room played very significant roles in providing a platform for real-time monitoring of field operations and passing needed information to field commanders during the 2019 general elections. To give the NACWC the much-needed impetus to accomplish its mandates, the Chief of Army Staff graciously approved the proposal by the Pioneer Commander, Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, Brigadier General Thomas Nohua, for the command headquarters complex, which will include administrative office building with various cells and the Cyber Operations Center, COC, officers and soldiers quarters and the school. This beautiful and magnificent edifice was purposely built to house the Nigerian Minister of Affairs Command in a serene and conducive environment. And this place is well built, equipped and furnished with the best systems and tools you can imagine to enable our crop of well-trained highly educated and motivated personnel to work effectively and achieve the course vision of having a professionally responsive Nigerian army in the discharge of its constituent roles. Today, the multi-dimensional complex, which was constructed in 12 months, is not only structurally completed, but well equipped with state-of-the-art cyber hardwares and softwares for efficient service delivery to the Nigerian army and the nation. A tour inside the building will reveal the extent of work done. With this, the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, NACWC, is poised to be a leading player in the cyberspace in Africa and the world. the special guest of honor sir it is now time for the special guest of honor to make his remark may i have the honor and privilege to humbly invite your excellency the special guest of honor the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of federal republic of nigeria president muhammadu buhari grand commander of the order of the federal republic to make his remark virtually declared the conference open, virtually commissioned the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command Complex, and virtually launched the housing scheme for families of kill in action officers and soldiers. Your Excellency, the Special Guest of Honor, sir. The Chief of Staff, Honorary Minister of Defense, Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, 
and representatives of other service chiefs, chief of defense intelligence, former service chiefs present, senior government officials, senior military officers, both serving and retired, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure and duty to be here with you virtually towards today at the opening ceremony of the Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference 2020. I am aware that the purpose of this conference is to appraise the activities of the Nigerian Army in the year 2020 and make projections for next year. This conference also provides an avenue for the leadership of the Army to reassess its preparedness and operational readiness in carrying out its constitutional roles and get itself ready for next year's challenges. This sort of periodic self-assessment is vital in the accomplishment of the wonderful responsibilities and challenges facing our army and the nation at large. The year 2020 has been a challenging one for many reasons. The outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic has impacted negatively on almost every aspect of our national life. Despite this, I am pleased to note that the Army remained resolute in the discharge of its constitutional responsibilities and in keeping the health and welfare of our soldiers a priority. The Army's support of civil authorities in the management of the coronavirus pandemic is a case in point. Also, the peaceful elections conducted in Edo and Ondo states would not have been achieved without the high level of professionalism displayed by all security agencies, including the Army. Let me also mention the end SARS protests, which were sadly hijacked by hooligans to cause wanton damage to lives and property in many, in many cities across the country. I want to reiterate our government's commitment to the rights of citizens to embark on peaceful protests. However, this must be done responsibly and in accordance with the laws of the land. I also wish to state that any act of hooliganism behind lawful and peaceful protests will be dealt with decisively to ensure the peace and stability of our nation. On this note, I commend the armed forces for their efforts to swiftly restore law and order in various states during the large-scale criminality that ensued in the wake of the ANSAS protests. Let me also use this opportunity to commend the Army for its unwavering commitment towards curtailing the activity of insurgents, armed bandits, kidnappers, cattle wrestlers, and other violent criminals through ongoing exercises and operations in different parts of the country. Notably, the exercise Sahel Sanity launched a few months back in the Northwest, in the Northwest is to read the Casina Zamfara Corridor of Marauding Bandits. 
I am happy to note that the commendable progress has been made towards attaining the objectives of the exercise. I have also been briefed about the tremendous successes that have been achieved by troops during the ongoing Operation Fireball in the Northeast. I charge you all to sustain these efforts until the full restoration of peace and security in the nation is achieved. During the period under review, I have followed with keen interest the Army's efforts at capacity building as, ex as exemplified in the numerous seminars, workshops, and field exercises conducted in 2020. I have also been kept duly informed of the Army's focus on revamping the existing training institutions towards the enhanced capacity building of its personnel. This underscores the choice of the theme for this year's Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference, which is Human Capacity Development in Sustaining Professionalism and the Responsiveness at the Nigerian Army in the Discharge of its Constitutional Roles. I consider this theme apt because it is only through human capacity development that any institution can attain the level of professionalism needed to effectively and efficiently carry out its constitutional roles. Let me now congratulate the Army for holding this conference at this magnificent edifice housing the Army's Cyber Warfare Command with its state-of-the-art Cyber Warfare Operations Center. This shows that the Army is alive to the changing nature of warfare, which is gradually moving into the cyber domain. By the same token, I commend the visionary leadership that was worked that has worked assiduously to emplace this vital capability that will fill an existing gap in our nation's security and defense architecture. This and other numerous infrastructural projects that have been embarked upon in recent times by the leadership of the Army has shown good utilization of scarce national resources. I equally commend all efforts towards bringing Saka to families of all our fallen heroes who paid the supreme sacrifice in our fight against insurgency and other forms of crimes across the country. This administration will not relent in its efforts to take adequate care of families and loved ones left behind by those who sacrificed their lives on our behalf. It is lined with this that the Army, as part of its welfare initiative and in line with the federal government housing program, is undertaking the housing scheme for families and next of kings of troops that were killed in action in the fight against insurgency and other criminalities in the country. I believe this initiative will act as a huge moral booster to the troops on the front lines as well as project the army in good light. On our part, I assure you that this administration will continue to do all within available resources to provide for your operational and welfare needs. I have been briefed that some of the major capabilities that we procured for the Army 
will soon be inducted into the various theaters of operations. I urge you all to make judicious use of these capabilities, even as we await the arrival of other currently pending shipment to the country. I wish to also remember our men and women in uniform who have paid the supreme sacrifice in the defense and security of our nation. My heart goes to all their families, comrades, and friends as we pray for the repose of their souls, we must strengthen our collective resolve to address those issues that will make every part of our country a safe and secure place to live and carry out our normal businesses. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to formally declare the Chief of Army Staff Annual Conference 2020 open. May I use this opportunity to also launch the housing scheme for next of kin of personnel of the Nigerian Army killed in action. I thank you all and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Shall we take the national anthem, please? Shall we all rise, please? The Honorable Minister of Defense, sir, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are now on Surya 19 of today's program, which is the presentation of brochure of ASSI scheme for families of killed in action officers and soldiers and souvenirs and also caught the ceremonial tape on behalf of Mr. President. On this note, May I humbly request the Chief of Amazing Staff, in person of Lieutenant General Tukuyusu Buratai, to present first the brochure of housing scheme for families of kill in action officers and soldiers, present souvenirs to His Excellency, the Special Guest of Honor. The souvenir will be received by the Honorable Minister of Defense, and thereafter present a souvenir to the Honorable Minister of Defense. The Chief of Army Staff, sir. Where is the book? Thank you very much, sir. 
Next is the presentation of souvenirs to the special guest of honor. It will be received by the Honorable Minister of Defense. The Honorable Minister of Defense will receive the souvenir on behalf of Mr. President. <laughs> Secondly, as his capacity as the Honorable Minister of Defense. We shall now watch a short video clip on the housing scheme for families of killed in action of such and soldiers. If you do, please, please. So you guys, ladies and gentlemen, we shall now move on to the next item. Before I more respectfully request the Chief of Prime Minister to invite the Honorable Minister of Defense to commission the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Complex, the following authorized dignitaries will accompany the Honorable Minister of Defense. These are the Chief of Defense Intelligence the representative of Inspector General of Police, the former Chief of Defense Staff and Services Chief here present, the Director General Nigerian Army Resource Center, and the Vice Chancellor Nigerian Army University Bill. These are the authorized dignitaries that will enter the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command building. Thank you very much, sir. At this point, let us now sit back and watch the video clips on the ASUS scheme 
for families of kids in action of such and soldiers. Thank you, sir. Initiative of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tiwa Boratan, in tribute to our fallen heroes, to enable the leaders of fallen heroes to own a dwelling of their own in the face of the protracted challenges of the housing market. The estate initiated by Lieutenant General Tiwa Boratan provides the appropriate lending for all aspects of interactive human activities which includes residential and commercial, educational, institutional and recreational, including services. The housing scheme will be located within the fast rising destinations around the country. Housing type, four bedroom detached bungalow, three bedroom bungalow, two bedroom terrace apartments. Every house you reach emphasizes on the personal welfare spirit of the chief of army staff. Let my general T.Y. Boratai, a hero's villa comfort, style and security is guaranteed. Thank you very much, sir. The housing scheme is made up of four bedroom detached for corners and above. Three bedroom bungalow for lieutenant corners and majors. Two bedroom terrace apartment for soldiers. The housing scheme, we also have schools, hospitals, and recreation at areas. Thank you very much, sir. Before I most respectfully request the Chief of Army Staff to invite the Honorable Minister of Defense to commission the Nigerian Army Staff Warfare Building, the authorized dignitaries we are accompanying the Honorable Minister of Defense. These are the Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of Defense Intelligence, the representative of Inspector General of Police, the former Chief of Defense Staff and Services Chiefs here present, the Director General, Nigerian Army Resource Center, the Vice Chancellor, Nigerian Army University Bill. At this point, may I humbly request the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukuisu Buratai, to please invite the Honorable Minister of Defense, Major General B.S. Magashi, retired, Commander of the Federal of the Order of the Federal Republic, to unveil the commissioning plaque and also cut the ceremonial tape of the headquarters. Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command Complex on behalf of Mr. President, the Chief of Army Staff, sir. Sir, please note, only the authorized dignitaries will enter the building. The rest are expected to remain seated there. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. I'm directed to inform all our guests that it will take about 15 minutes for them to commission the building and also go into Sabah Operation Center. And as they are coming out, we shall all file out and join them for a group photograph. Thank you very much, sir.
The Nigerian army has evolved as one of the most enduring post-independent institutions in Nigeria. Having been formed before 1914, when the amalgamation of the Southern and Northern Protectorates took place, a modest assessment periscopes the Nigerian army formed in 1863 as having stayed the course since inception, not minding operational challenges confronting it. Over the course of its 157 years history, the Nigerian army has continued to discharge its role creditably within and outside Nigeria. Being a creation of Section 217 of the Nigerian Constitution, it is one of the services of the Nigerian Armed Forces. Its mission is to win land battles in defense of the territorial integrity of Nigeria, protect her national interests and accomplish other tasks in aid of civil authority. The Nigerian army has been through thick and thin but recorded invaluable strides in many operations and engagements. As at 2015, prior to the swearing-in of President Muhammadu Buhari, there were concerns about the multifaceted security challenges faced by Nigeria as no region was considered safe up to the federal capital territory. Consequently, on assumption of office on May 29, 2015, Muhammadu Buhari took off on a mandate planned on the economy, anti-corruption and national security. Progress has been made in recent weeks by our security forces. But victory cannot be achieved by building the command and control center in Abuja. The command center will be relocated to Medjugorje and remain until Boko Haram is completely subdued. This was followed swiftly with the practical move for change to rejig the narrative. Lieutenant General Tukur Yusuf Buratai, then a Major General, was appointed Chief of Army Staff in 2015 with the sole mandate to reinvigorate and lead the Nigerian Army to victory in its campaign against insecurity in the country. What did he meet? Prior to 2015, the the Nigerian army had seen or had experienced a period that was characterized by a new phenomenon known as the asymmetric warfare. This asymmetric warfare arising from the Boko Haram insurgency has really caught the armed forces, not only the army, uh, let me say by surprise, because all this while our training had been focused on conventional type of operation, we met an army that was caught unawares, that uh, its, tra its training was not focused on the contemporary challenges, and uh, we had also a very long period where there was inadequate equipment procurement, uh, virtually non-effective uh, procurement of uh, platforms. Equally, we had a period where there was complete sanction on Nigeria, especially military training for so many years as uh, such it affected our operations, it affected the morale of the troops, affected the general administration and logistic provision uh, for the troops. Since then and now, has the scenario changed? Having uh, been in the system, having uh, you know, known 
what you know is available and uh, having uh, visualized also what is likely to be done to address the situation. I, the first thing I did was to uh, have a you know a vision statement uh, to for us to see how we can transform uh, the the whole scenario uh, to change how our officers uh, conduct themselves in terms of the areas of training, in terms of that to do with our professionalism and um, also being responsive. So I said no, I must get a submission statement that is all encompassing and will address the current uh, you know, situation as of 2015. I said we must have a professionally responsive Nigerian army in the discharge of its constitutional responsibilities. And uh, this is what set the tone, set the, 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 the steps, you know, towards the transformation of the Nigerian army to what we have today. So what has been the direction of the affairs in the last five years spanning 2015 to the year 2020? Within the constitutional mandate of the Nigerian army, has the Nigerian army moved on to a contemporary fighting force? Does the Nigerian army have the right structure, posture, manpower, adequate equipment, training, sound and up-to-date logistics, good welfare, suitable institutions and policies to sustain operations? In terms of training, what has happened, that's why the fact that we are fighting has been enormous training both locally and outside Nigeria, including seconding trainers all the way from outside Nigeria down to Nigeria to come and get involved in training and developing capacity for the Nigerian army. We've not had so we've, we've not had it so good before. I was also privileged to be chief of training and operations. I know how many officers and soldiers, either individually or in group, they were taken out of Nigeria for one form of training or the other to build capacity. In documenting these and bringing to limelight the Nigerian army, five years of transformation agenda came the idea of a compendium of Nigerian army transformation, the Buratai years. The Nigerian Army Transformational Activities is a journey, not a destination, an evolving system in progress. The achievements of the Nigerian Army in the last five years cuts across board covering areas of doctrine, reorganization, logistics, training, administration, policy, sports and administrative development, as well as leadership-driven professional will, dogged commitment and national interests under the prevailing circumstances. Succinctly captured in the compendium is a modest chronicle of strides and milestones. A lot went into the works through brainstorming sessions, consultations, research, fact-checking as well as connections and disconnections. There's a lot of misconception out there about the military, particularly in recent times. But when you go through this volume, you would actually see that uh, the military is indeed the pride of the nation, particularly the Nigerian army. The sacrifice our men you know, make for the country, not just the country, for the sub-region and the world at large. And all the efforts that the leadership has put in, you know, sometimes under very challenging circumstances, you know, to make sure that the, um, the country remains safe, the country is secure, and uh, citizens can go about their business uh, without any fear of anything. So this book is a must read for you, because when you read this book, you get to understand the army better. And when people uh, who are not as informed as you say certain things that, you know, they do not 
aligned with what the army stands for, you'll be able to defend them. The Compendium is a paradigm shift from the routine army chronicles of events and pictures, but a compelling and scholarly material that carefully chronicles the ideologies behind the respective transformational initiatives. To say the least, the Compendium has set the bar for future publications, not just for the Nigerian army, but the other services and agencies of government. One may then ask, what informed the Compendium? The Chief of Army Staff is a renowned scholar and an accomplished historian. On many fora, he had always talked about uh, an idea of documenting some of our achievements and transformation programs for posterity. For instance, Reorganization in the Nigerian army has been on restructuring for effective projection of combat power in the likes of Theater Command Operation Lafayette Dole, 6th Division, 8th Division, 4 Special Forces Command, Directorate for Force Generation and Motorcycle Battalions. In exploiting the air and space domain for improved performance, there is in place the Nigerian Army Aviation 50 Space and Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Commands. When we have peace, okay, economic activities thrive, business activities, you know, goes on, farming activities goes on, and in a lot of areas that we, you know, we, we, have, uh, we have operated, there has, been, there has been some level of calm and some level of activities going on. But, you know, we urge all other, you know, security uh, agencies, all other uh, elements of government to come in also and play their own role so that everything will now uh, metamorphose into a complete you know complete package while we are doing our kinetic carrying out our kinetic efforts the non-kinetic uh, efforts will also be at play so that everything balances up at the end of the day training and operations in the nigerian army have been revolutionized through the adoption of new approaches to exercises as well as the establishment of the Special Forces School Land Force Simulation Center, Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command and the Directorates of Language among others. These have brought about countering insurgency and asymmetric threats, dominance of the cyberspace in defense and attacks. It was a total review of our training packages that were to meet with the contemporary security uh, threats that were bedeviling the nation. Apart from that, this training was holistic in the sense that it allows for the total training of the individual, both physically, emotionally, and leadership. At the various uh, stratas, a lot has been achieved especially in building the capacity of officers and men of the Nigerian army in the area of training, which leads to operational successes. Commitment to human resource development through research and functional military education led to unprecedented breakthroughs in militaries around the world. Establishment of the Army War College, Nigerian Army Resource Center, Nigerian Army History Institute, Nigerian Army University B, Tukur Yusuf Boratai Counter-Terrorism Center, and the Nigerian Army Command Schools speak volumes and attest to education for battlefield success and intellectual development for sustainability which are key to successful operations. Anywhere in the world, you allow those who are serving to face their routine activities, engage the adversary, do their job. Let those who are retired or civilians start thinking for them. They bring a problem here, we look at the problem and give them recommendations that we believe could work. And that's what we've been doing. Already we've run eight courses and it's been wonderful. Because now the belief is those guys can walk anywhere and at least be able to relate with the locals, hand their trust, hand their confidence, and above all, get information that we processed into intelligence to conduct the operations. A lot has been achieved on innovations and logistic support, strengthening local maintenance capacity, as well as on building strategic partnership for sustenance. All these ultimately lay credence to transformation in Keating and stores capability and also touched the Directorate of Procurement. 
on institutional strengthening is in place the Special Retrofitting and Repair Workshop, Artillery Repair Effort, and the Command Engineering Depot. The collaborations are in place with Proforce Limited, Nigerian Machine Tools Protective Solutions Limited, Nigerian Helicopter Project, Buffalo Engineering and Technical Services, among other international partnerships. We have set in motion everything that will make us to institutionalize this vehicle production. So from our technical crew, from our engineering crew, from the reverse engineering desk we have set up, from the uh, patenting arrangement we have made for our products, we have done every institutional framework to make sure that this project, which is a job to be highly successful, will be sustained. We are looking at producing different variants of both armored and non-armored vehicles for the armed forces in the next five years. We want the Nigerian army to be self-sufficient with locally made vehicles so that it can grow our economy. We employ more people. We are not losing our foreign, uh, uh, our currency because of the value. We don't need, we don't, we don't need Naira. The raw materials we are researching into it will be locally made in Nigeria. This achievement has been based on the Mr. President uh, initiative in building many military industrial complex for Nigeria. With the signing of uh, Presidential Order 5, which also assisted in procurement of engineering, engineering resources and some other requirements locally. It has triggered or stimulated the interest of the, of the Chief of Army staff, who has keyed into this presidential uh, initiative to ensure that Nigerian Army could and undertake some of research and development to produce locally made uh, defense logistics, combat vehicles, radios, and even some of the uh, items that also could provide uh, support civilian organizations like uh, the the collaboration has been able to produce mobile borehole drilling machines that we have used to provide water in the barracks as well as uh, several communities in Cardinal Metropolis. Infrastructural development is an imperative for posterity, enhanced service delivery and value addition in the public and private sectors. On this plan, this has remained a priority of the Nigerian Army High Command as can be seen with the production of Izugu Emra. Tukur Buratai Center for CT Coin, Igbenadium University, Barracks Investment Initiative Program, Department of Projects and Programs, Nigerian Army Special Projects, and the Nigerian Army Farms and Ranches Limited, Upgrade of Nigerian Army Hospitals, the Nigerian Army Reference Hospital Meduguri, Nigerian Army College of Nursing, and the Magnificent Army Command and Naowa Hospitals in Abuja. This is a good avenue for military civil relationship because uh, the hospital, like I said, is open to the public. The, we've had quite some patronage from civilians so far. Then some organizations are even willing to uh, partner with us to use this place as their primary care center for their staff, uh, which we are working at now to see whether it can be used. Uh, this hospital is an army hospital, uh, so we are available to support the army in any uh, civil military uh, activity they are engaged in. We have uh, experts in environmental health and uh, preventive health. This uh, can be used to address some aspects of preventive health, health education, outreaches to communities, and uh, provision of uh, support to the needy, which is all part of uh, Naowa humanitarian uh, vision. So the hospital can play a very pivotal role in carrying out this to reach out to even the, beyond the military. Doctrinally, 
the Nigerian army has repositioned itself to engage in contemporary operations in a comprehensive approach template including the Nigerian Army Human Rights Policy, Communication Technology, Sexual Exploitations, Deployment of Officers to Ministries, Departments and Agencies as well as Production of New Logistics Handbook. On the whole, the compendium puts us through the reality that a leader is one who takes subordinates to their destinations and adequately empowers them for the future. The compendium is a must-read reference material for all strategic leaders who seek to understand the ideologies behind the many transformational activities in the Nigerian army in the last five years, as behind every success, there is a pillar. Lieutenant General Tuku brought high driving skills coupled with the strength of military institution, knows that with requisite direction to counter contemporary and unforeseen threats, tops the priority. To his strides and unique personage, with the coinage, the man to Kurburatai, tough on terrorists, gentle at heart. Being the 29th chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Kurburatai mounted the rostrum of office at the time best described as a paradigm shift in global security and warfare management. For the man to Kurburatai, Sustaining the building blocks on the strides already attained should continue advancing towards greater heights since it is evolving yet to no destination. A journey towards greatness and strategic attainments should not wane but should continuously gain traction. Others, just like Lieutenant General Tukur Yusuf Kuratai, came, played their role but his legacy arguably outlives his time propelling to higher heights. I want to say the continuation of the professional standing of the Nigerian Army. I want to see the Nigerian Army being responsive continuously to the needs of the troops, to the needs of uh, the nation's security uh, architecture. I want to see that uh, the welfare of troops uh, were taken care of at all times. I want to say very highly motivated with high morale troops, you know, uh, even when I must have left uh, the service. Uh, continuous uh, maintenance of troops, accommodation, offices, and so on. Um, intensive training, uh, as well as uh, equipping of all our units and formations are very fundamental. This uh, the legacies I have left and I look forward uh, after retirement that uh, this should continue. If the current transformation evident in the compendium of Nigerian army are built on faithfully, the near future for the Nigerian army speaks volumes. The Nigerian army, having stayed the course since inception, not minding the operational challenges, is propelled by a vision which is now on a mission. Over the years, it has been through thick and thin, but has recorded invaluable strides in many operations and engagements made possible by the caliber of officers and operational structure in place. The very best can only happen after now on sustainability plans, as the future from today is just like tomorrow. The determination and driving force, however, should be the morale in sustaining the evolution rolling along with visible strides that outlives each passing day. I salute the courage and the gallant efforts of the personnel of the Nigerian Army. I am highly impressed with the conduct of operations that continue to flesh out the terrorists from their enclaves. I urge you to sustain this great effort. Let me at this point salute the Chief of Army Staff for his laudable efforts at transforming the Nigerian Army. He has keyed into the federal government change agenda and I particularly commend his trust in the critical areas such as innovative and inventive approach to producing military hardware, infrastructural development, restructuring and reorganization 
among others with significant results, particularly in the ongoing counterinsurgency operations and other operations across the country. Nigerian Army, as one of the leading armies of the world, regularly initiates and formulates policies and programs to bolster its operations and administration. With Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buratai taking the reins of leadership of the Nigerian Army in 2015, the transformation journey to a professionally responsive army in the discharge of its constitutional roles began. In line with this plan to place the Nigerian Army in the League of Internationally Renowned Armies in the cyberspace, the Chief of Army Staff established the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, NACWC, in 2018. The Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command was established in uh, October 2018 by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukurisu Pratai. This followed the realization that after land, sea, air, and space. Cyberspace is the fifth domain of warfare. At inception, the command was equipped with the latest and the best systems, tools, and software, and manned by a crop of dedicated and well-trained personnel drawn from across the Nigerian army. The Command is tasked with the responsibility of protecting and monitoring critical Nigerian information system assets. The command also has the task of ensuring the presence of the Nigerian army in cyberspace. The command also promotes the culture of cyber security among Nigerian personnel and ensures the compliance adherent to guidelines, principles and standards as related to cyber security. The command has the task of also ensuring that the Nigerian information system and other assets are safe. We have the task of fighting cyber terrorism, fake news, identity theft, online radicalization, among others. On the 15th of October 2018, Lieutenant General Tuku Buratai formally commissioned the NACWC at the Army Headquarters in Abuja. <laughs> The 
The NACWC presence in the Nigerian security circle was cemented when the Chief of Defense Staff, General A.G. Oloni Shakin, other service chiefs and heads of security agencies visited the Nigerian Army Situation Room at the Army Headquarters. Equally, the Senate Committee on ICT and Cyber Crimes visited the Situation Room and they were briefed on the operations of the NACWC. Charged with the responsibility to effectively combat cyber threats to the Nigerian Army Information System and Nigeria at large, the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command has achieved so much within a short period. It is worthy of note that with strategic directives from the Chief of Army Staff, the Nigerian Army Situation Room played very significant roles in providing a platform for real-time monitoring of field operations and passing needed information to field commanders during the 2019 general elections. To give the NACWC the much-needed impetus to accomplish its mandates, the Chief of Army Staff graciously approved the proposal by the Pioneer Commander, Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, Brigadier General Thomas Nohua, for the command headquarters complex which will include administrative office building with various cells and the Cyber Operations Center, COC, officers and soldiers' quarters, and the school. This beautiful and magnificent edifice was purposely built to house the Nigerian Cyber Fire Command in a serene and conducive environment. And this place is well built, equipped, and furnished with the best systems and tools you can imagine to enable our crop of well-trained, highly educated and motivated personnel to work effectively and achieve the core vision of having a professional responsive Nigerian Army in the discharge of its constituent roles. Today, the multi-dimensional complex, which was constructed in 12 months, is not only structurally completed, but well equipped with state-of-the-art cyber hardwares and softwares for efficient service delivery to the Nigerian army and the nation. A tour inside the building will reveal the extent of work done. With this, the Nigerian Army Cyber Warfare Command, NACWC, is poised to be a leading player in the cyberspace in Africa and the world.